Did I pay to get on the Forbes 30 under 30 list? How does one even make the list? Is Forbes a scam? Hi, I'm Emily. I'm the founder of Sondering Studio, an indie game studio creating narrative games with heart. And this is my story of how I got on the Forbes 30 under 30 list for games. I'm gonna cover who I am and my come up story, the specifics of how I got on the list and how maybe you can too, and then my honest reflections slash are there any benefits of being in Forbes? My journey started when I went to the Game Awards as a junior at UCLA. I went just as a fan and was amazed hearing the perspectives of the developers of my favorite games. It got me thinking, I like to play games, I consider myself a creative person, what if I made them? I jokingly told my friend, one day I'm gonna be in the Game Awards and he lovingly laughed at me. So I joined UCLA's Game Dev Club. I knew nothing about making games and had never opened Unity or any other game engine in my life. I studied English in college and I was in a room full of programmers, but everything just clicked. I fell in love with the practice and knew this is what I want to do with my life. I became a team lead and started leading a group of students to make a game. I eventually became an officer and I participated in game jams, hackathons where you make a game from scratch in a short period of time. That summer, I even worked at Dorian, a mobile game startup. I know everything seems smooth so far, but it wasn't. My first game project was a complete failure and got scrapped. I faced abuse from someone in the club something that is actually very commonplace in this industry if you're a woman. My senior year, I was rejected from every job I applied to, which was over a hundred. I even cried when I got rejected from Riot Games. I interviewed for them twice, made it to the final round twice, and then was rejected twice. Bruh. Genuinely, I wondered if I belonged in this industry. I formed strong bonds with the people I made games with, but I also had people in the club doubting me. Then I made a little game called The Taste of the Past for Ludum Dare, Ludum Dare, a three-day game jam, and it changed my entire life. The game tells the story of a young girl overcoming the loss of her mother through cooking Chinese food. I wrote about my complicated relationship with my family, my struggle between creativity and stability, and my upbringing as a Chinese American woman. After the jam, my team refined the game a bit and put it on Steam, expecting nothing. Since its release, I've been featured in Game Devs of Color, Business Insider, Polygon, and Malala Fund. The game has over 100,000 plays and an overwhelmingly positive rating on Steam. The game kickstarted my studio's involvement with Xbox's Developer Acceleration Program, which is how I'm making my next game. I received thousands of comments from people telling me that this game made them feel less alone. If you've played the game or left a review, genuinely thank you. I had so much self-doubt about whether or not I belonged in games. I am eternally grateful for your feedback. I realized I no longer wanted to work at a big studio and work on projects I'm frankly not that passionate about. What if I continue to make the games I wanna make? What if I started a studio? The name Saundering Studio comes from the word saunder, which means the profound realization that everyone, including passerbys on the street, has a life as complex as your own. That feeling is what I try to capture with my games. I make games about ordinary people who go through struggles just like you and me, but through that, they learn extraordinary life lessons. I graduated college without a job and got a LinkedIn message from a recruiter asking if I was interested in working at Instagram. I never thought I would be in big tech, especially as someone with an English degree, but I took the job and my life changed for the better. I even accomplished my goal of being in the Game Awards. Last year, I was part of the Game Awards Future Class, 50 individuals who represent the bright, bold and inclusive future of gaming. My name and bio were on the website and I got to meet so many people in the industry I admire. I started working on Sondering Studios' next game in my off time and everything was going really well until I was laid off. I was devastated. I thought things were on the up. I got and exceeds expectations on my last performance review. I was super happy to work on my game in my off time. And I even started making little videos on the internet about my game dev journey. I wish I could say I persevered, but I did not. I could barely get out of bed every day. My therapist told me she thought I was depressed. I felt like I had worked so hard just to be let go in an email at 4 a.m. Five months later, I got a temporary job to work at Yahoo as a designer, which just ended last week. And this week, 
I'm freaking Forbes. As for what I'm up to right now, I am working on my next game and preparing the pitch for my next game. If you're interested in learning more about the specifics on how I got into Forbes and you just want to support me, I do have a Patreon where I offer game dev resources, bonus videos, and one-on-one -on -one consulting. I just uploaded a doc to my Patreon that includes exactly what I wrote for my Forbes nomination form. If you are identified as a possible candidate, the Forbes editors will send you a Google form with questions for you to answer. I also included the questions and some of my answers in the doc. I also have a coffee if you want to support there. As I mentioned, I am unemployed, so any support would be greatly appreciated. Did I pay to get on Forbes? Well, I lost my job twice this year, so no. I have to worry about other things like paying my rent, but let's really get into it. How did I get on the list? Every year, Forbes puts out a nomination form and anyone can fill it out. You can even nominate yourself. I was very lucky. I knew someone who had been a previous winner on Forbes 30 under 30 and she agreed to nominate me. The form asks very basic questions about you, like your age, your name, and then why do you deserve to be on the list? A couple weeks later, I got an email saying I was identified as a possible candidate and to move forward, answer this Google form. The Google form had a ton of questions about my company, my game studio, and also more fun questions like, who is your dream mentor? Some of the questions were pretty difficult to answer, such as whether I feel pessimistic or optimistic about the state of the US economy for startups. I took a few weeks to work on it and then I sent it off. I heard that to be successful in making the list, you want to create a story about yourself rather than just listing your accolades. I shared my beginnings at UCLA's Game Dev Club, the challenges I faced along the way, and the future of Sondering Studio. I wrote about how I learned to give up the goal of telling the perfect story, one with sophisticated vocabulary and proper grammar. Instead, I want to tell my story, shameful parts and all. I had no idea I made the list until everyone else saw. I just know I woke up one morning, I checked my phone, I saw a bunch of congrats texts, and I was like, congrats for what? I am very shocked I made the list. Kendall Jenner is on the list, and I feel like we are very different people. The goal of Sondering Studio is not to be the next gaming giant like Riot or Blizzard. Forbes celebrates people who have raised millions of dollars for their startup and who want to grow their company a hundred times. That's not me. I barely consider myself a business owner or a startup founder. I'm just someone who really likes to make games and was forced to make a company to make the games I want to make. This is the first year I tried to get on the list and I got in. As for the benefits of Forbes 30 under 30, to be honest, I feel like it's mostly just a cool thing to put on your resume. So far, I haven't got any money or any insane opportunities. In fact, I was invited to a launch party for people who made Forbes 30 under 30 in New York and I couldn't get it. Bruh. The RSVP filled up too fast, so I can't go. Yes, I cannot go to my own party celebrating people like me. That being said, I am very grateful I made the list. This could not have happened without Xbox for being amazing business partners and my team at Sondering Studio for being kick-ass game developers. They are such talented and hardworking people and I am lucky to have them. I just try my best to uplift the amazing work they do. Thank you so much for watching this video. As a reminder, I do have a Patreon where I offer bonus videos, game dev resources, and one-on-one -on -one consultation. I have a doc uploaded there of the specifics of how I got into Forbes in case you are interested or you want to make the list yourself. You can follow my other socials and check out my page for more videos about my game development journey. Thank you, I will see you in the next one.